Hello Striders, welcome to a recap from Grand Prix Copenhagen. Uh, what to say, what to say. Well, let's start out by looking at my finish. It was place 698, so not very impressive. And to be brutally honest, I'm very disappointed in my finish. Uh, I'm disappointed in... Uh, uh, the results, but I'm not disappointed at all with the deck or how I played or my cyber attacks or anything. I felt very confident uh, playing each and every match, and uh, things just didn't work out the way I wanted to. Uh, so I ended up five and four in the end. I was five and one felt pretty good and then it went downhill very quickly so yeah uh, anyway I brought some footage from the site and uh, not that much but a few uh, moments from the hotel a few moments from the site and a nice little instructional video of how I'm uh, preparing for the trip so I'm gonna put some time codes in the description and then you can just watch whatever parts you you want so I'm gonna show you the instructions for how I usually prepare like how do I pack my backpack sort of stuff and then we'll go on to uh, talking about the hotel and everything around the GP and then we will finish off with some footage from the site and looking at my deck and talking about the games so uh, let's jump into the first video which will be the how to pack video so let's go over to that segment hello striders welcome to the GP video I thought it would be appropriate to start off at my home the night before I'm traveling to the GP. I thought it would be nice to go through a few tips to make your GP experience a lot better. Let's take a look. Tip number one. Do your preparation the night before you're gonna go. As you can see it's 9 in the evening here. I'm well prepared. You, you really do want to do this, honestly. It, it's just so much better to have everything in order before uh, sorry, before you go to bed. You don't have to worry about anything. And if you do need something or you suddenly think of one thing that you need, it's okay. You will have time for that. It is not recommended <laughs> to go up and start preparing before breakfast or whatever and then just rush away because then you will forget something. So tip number one. Be prepared in good time. Let's look at uh, my table here. So I prepared a lot of stuff here uh, that you need to uh, have a good GP experience. So first of all and probably the most important thing is if you're gonna go to a constructed GP you want your deck sleeved and ready. Counted in this you have 60 cards in the main and 15 cards in the sideboard not a problem you could also um, print out deck lists uh, beforehand if you're certain of what you're gonna play saves you a lot of time and effort on the GP also important and this is tips number two Let me get this to work. there we go number two make sure that your deck has absolutely no foils or I guess is 100% foil. I've got game losses I've seen other people get game losses because your deck seems to be um, marked you have marked cards in your deck because you have a foil that that bends just a little bit too much and then you get a game loss so I just removed my foil basics because I don't want to get a game loss. I just don't. I don't think it's worth trying to brag with uh, shiny lands and gamble with a game loss. So that's my second tip. 
don't 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 go there. It's it's just not worth it. All right, let's keep looking. So all right, uh, what else? We need to have some extra deck boxes with sleeves and basics. That's a tip. If you want to draft or something, always nice. Got your stack of die. That's 36 to be exact. Pretty good. You got your life pad and this stack here is cards or these stacks are filled with cards that I'm gonna borrow out to my friends. And if you have made a promise to do that, please <laughs> bring the cards. Kind of idle. And here, no, tip number three. This the fat pack. First of all, you can stack all your other deck boxes in it, which is great. But also, you can. Where are we? There we go. You can also um, put everything that you get at the GP in the box. If you win a few boosters, which you probably will, uh, maybe you draft and get a stack of uh, single cards. You don't want to put them in your bag. <laughs> Loose. You do you want something to put them in and if you're like me and you saw my deck box it's stacked already it doesn't fit in anymore so bring something to fill with cards that you get at the GP. Good tip. Alright what else? Of course we have a stack of clothes. We have some t-shirts, we have sweatpants, a couple a pair of jeans, I also bring a jacket and some underwear under there. Uh, I'm a very warm person, but I still bring a jacket because you don't want the headache, you know. Oh, it's cold and I don't have anything to put on. I just bring it because it's, it's simple. Then we have the snack department. I usually bring a couple of these. It's like uh, uh, pre-packed uh, sandwiches, sandwiches with hard bread. Uh, it's okay to snack on between games and stuff. Uh, on GPs you don't have time to go eat and then I bring some uh, uh, cashew nuts um, should probably not bring them to the GP but it's still pretty good to have to snack on and then tip number four I think yeah tip number four this the water bottle I would never leave uh, at a, uh, for a GP without that it is essential vital whatever you want to call it I mean personally there were. Personally, water is not really my favorite type of drink. Yeah, I enjoy other stuff. You can try to figure that out if you want. But at a GP or any time of event where there is something on the line, you, you need to focus and then water is absolutely the best. So cold water, great. Start drink the, the night before actually. It's, it's good for you. Then for uh, for me, I also bring uh, a couple of painkillers um, I tend to get a headache after like six or seven matches and I feel like almost like dizzy and uh, very feverish so I bring a couple of those to, to um, counter that, it's good. Then you might want to bring some kind of entertainment. In this deck box here we have the card game Epic. Easy to bring, easy to play. Uh, even though we are at the GP to play Magic, it's nice to take a break sometimes. Then we have like the essential parts here. We have my cell phone, uh, my passport. I don't need it really to go to Denmark from Sweden, but I'm going to bring it anyway because it doesn't take any room. Got the wallet, keys, um, headphones, uh, a portable charger and um, a wire, obviously, because you never know you might need it and then we have some um, uh, hygiene products you need those you need a toothbrush and some shampoo and stuff that's good and then uh, for the final tip if you're gonna travel use this the backpack it is by far the best thing you can have if you need the stupid big uh, um, you know trunk you're gonna be away for more than the GP, not more than two days. Do yourself a solid and pack a backpack in your trunk because 
you're gonna need that. You don't wanna carry around a big sack of stuff. You want uh, something easy, something simple, something you can bring with you and have easy access to. I think that was it. Now I'm going to uh, make the last few preparations and I'll see you probably at the train station. That will probably be our next stop, but who knows. So we'll see you shortly for the next part of this series. Alright, welcome back. Uh, hope you enjoyed that part. Uh, now I think we should jump over to... We're, we're just gonna look at the, the hotel room. It's not, it's not much and talk quickly about the hotels and what I think about them. So let's jump over to that. Alright, this is the hotel room. It's not much for the world. It's two beds, a table and a toilet. That's basically what I want uh, from my hotel because all I'm gonna do here is sleep and store my stuff so no five-star hotels for me. Uh, the only thing I need is breakfast and then we're ready to go. Alright, nice. Um, I'm gonna show you the footage from uh, the site as well. The site. I have some footage of the site. There we go. Good English. And then we will uh, jump over to the deck list and discuss the matchups. So uh, let's look at the site and get some insight from me when I was there in action. So let's take a look. Hello, traders. I'm currently two and O. Oh, things are looking up. I just got some time to show you the vendors. We have some vendors over there as well. It's uh, around, I think, 1,800 people playing, and uh, I gotta hurry back to find my seat, so yeah. Alright, gonna get my camera up. Um, got some more time here. I'm currently 5 and 1, so things are very, very good right now. Uh, on this side, we have the highest ranked tables, and uh, as you can see, there are a lot of players here, so gonna find my seat. Hurry up. No strutters. Now I'm unfortunately 5 and 4, so no more magic for me, at least not for the main event. Uh, here are the side event tables, and here is where you register for side events and grab your prizes if you're lucky enough to get some. And uh, yeah, my plan now is to do some chaos drafts and uh, do some cons team draft conspiracy. Emperor with my friends at back at the hotel. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do and uh, I'll see you shortly back at home All right, that was the site Let's look at my deck that I finally ended up playing so as you probably lo know at this point I played Grixis Delver and uh, I mean I was very happy with my deck list uh, I made a few minor changes. Um, uh, I added a ceremonious rejection instead of. Um, uh, I don't even remember, but I think it was my. It was like a flex slot that I didn't use, so I, I brought it in. Uh, and I ended up switching the two spell pierces for two spell snares and as I stated before they, they were like equally good so Sp uh, spell snare being a bit better in the late game so this is what I ended up playing uh, to begin with I played a trial and I won the first match and then I lost the second one um, very unfortunate but the big problem was <laughs> that I was supposed to borrow like eight cards and um, I didn't think of that so I just went ahead and registered and then realized that I had like two minutes to put together my deck uh, and I didn't brought any of my spare cards so I had to take whatever cards I could find so uh, that that played a pretty big part <laughs> of me losing because I didn't have all the cards but then we have the um, the, the matchups so for the first round I played against yes Death's Shadow. Death Shadow and Death Shadow, all the Death Shadows. The first version of Death Shadow I faced was Jund. 
so a bit grinder and uh, it felt like I had total control and I actually brought in a Nethermancers too because they're usually at least a lightning bolt which you want so uh, I brought them in, I brought out like collector brutality and uh, my spell snares and stuff like that and then I brought in uh, um, and the mansers and stuff like that. So, and then you need explosives, of course. So that matchup felt very good, and it was no, not that hard to win. Then for match two, I got paired against a four-color Sahili combo deck, and um, I had a pretty good draw. And my opponent went like land birds, and uh, I went like land Delver and then I played Oath of Nyssa, bricked and passed the turn with no land so I terminated his birds and then I call against commanded his next bird uh, and then I played like a Tassiger and he just couldn't come back from that and in game 2 I had perfect control then he drops a scavenging use which just wrecked my plan and then I had to um, had to do some tricky attacking uh, to to make I had I forced him to block in such a way that my anger of the gods killed everything on the battlefield, and then I could follow up with another Tassiger and with like uh, terminate and uh, uh, deprive in hand, which is kind of the hard lock. So so two and two and zero oh to begin with, pretty good. And then I got to play against another Death Shadow deck. Um, this time it went south very fast so I won game one no big problem there I mean I curved out he curved out but uh, since I got burn I could just like flash in a snapcast to mage block and then bolt him to death uh, in game two uh, he had two Tarmogoyfs and a death shadow uh, I was at five life and Tarmogoyfs were four fives and death shadow was like huge and I had lethal with uh, my flip the delver, so all I needed was him to not draw, um, uh, to not draw like a removal spell, so I could jump with two snapcast mages uh, and go to one. But of course he drew, <laughs> he drew Mishra's bauble, which uh, grew the goys to five fives, and then they were lethal. And then in game three, he played like two lingering souls, and I couldn't break through, and uh, then I lost. So, yeah, that was a four-color Death Shadow deck. Uh, it could even have been five colors. I don't really know. So, two and one, unfortunately. Then I got paired against another Death Shadow deck. Uh, this time it was the Grixis type, and uh, well. I had some luck in the last game, game 3, I flipped Delver and attacked and uh, basically the same scenario as the previous match. If he top deck removal I'm dead, if he top decks anything but removal I win and he did not uh, find removal so that was pretty good. So I could untap and attack and play an Endermancer for lethal. Then that puts me up to 3 and 1, then I played against... Uh, Eldrazi, Eldrazi Stompy, and once again another Mancer. <laughs> it burned my opponent for like seven damage. So game one I won. I curved out uh, pretty nicely and could keep the control uh, for long enough that I could burn my opponent out. And then in game two I drew a Fulminate Mage to set him back a lot, and then I could another Mancer once he he took over the game. So. It's pretty nice. Turned a lot of heads at the table. What you played? What? What? What does it do? <laughs> pretty funny. So four and one, and then I played against another Swede who played Infect, and I have to say Infect is like my best matchup. So my my uh, opening play was Land Delver, and then I had Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, Call Against Command, uh, Land and Terminate. So yeah, game one went pretty well and then I could bring in um, uh, like counter squall, dispel, engineered explosives 
which got uh, I got like a two for one or a three for one from that. Double Colgan's command got rid of two ink two inkmoth nexus, a spell skite, and uh, a blighted agent. So yeah, so five and one, and then it all came crumbling down, starting off with a rusty stompy. It's just so sad that I managed to win game one without any real issue. Game two, uh, I attack him, uh, he has no cards in hand, and I have like uh, mana leak and uh, something, and he draws reality smasher and attacks me for five with enough mana to pay for mana leak. It's like, eh. That, that's, that stinks and game 3 got really dragged out and I was so close he was at <laughs> he was at 10 and I had another Manser and he had 9 lands in play so if he had drawn uh, and played another land I would have won but uh, he didn't he drew another reality smasher and attacked me for like 9 down to 2 and then I, then I had to play another Manser to try to stay alive but uh, it didn't work so 5 and 2 and then I got to face burn and that's just the same thing, like, I put lethal on the board, he has no cards in hand, I'm at 4 and he draws Boros Charm. Oh, game 1 goes to him. Game 2, I crush him very fast with like Delver plus uh, Tassiger. Uh, and game 3, I have the best hand, I have like land, Delver, Dispel, Counter Squall, Mana Leak, Spell Snare and Lightning Bolt or something, it's really good. And he rift bolts my Delver. I'm not sure why, but he decided to do that. And then I didn't draw another threat until it was way too late. So, yeah, 5 and 3. And then last round I got to face Burn again. And, well, I won game game 1. And then game 2 I have... It was a complex scenario involving Eidolon, obviously. And uh, he had one card in hand, and I had like um, I had something like it. I had a terminate, but I couldn't terminate anything from his side because then I would would be unable to cast another spell. Uh, and then he attacked. He drew his card and attacked, so I got to eat his uh, Eidolon with my Tasker. Uh, and then I got to attack, and well, I had Counter Squall, so. Unless he had drawn two non-creature spell, two burn spells in a row without using them, I would lose, and well, or then I would win. But of course, he drew deflecting palm and lightning helix, so it was like completely unreal that I would win that. And then game three, I kept like three lands, two thought scours, two serum visions, so kind of a loose keep. And I drew nothing but uh, Thought Scours, Serum Visions, and Lands. I didn't cast a single impactful spell uh, whole game 3, so kind of a sad ending, but all in all, you shouldn't look at the results, but it's very hard to not do that when you only go to one GP a year, basically. Uh, it's a lot of pressure to do well. Uh, but, I mean, I have to try to look at it from a different angle and uh, the deck worked perfect I mean I have nothing I, I would like to change maybe bring in like uh, a crater's claw or something like two or three of those in the sideboard and remove like uh, painful truth didn't work very well for me so maybe that and rejection and maybe go down to one surgical or something uh, to up the burn match up a bit that's the only potential I think and um, I mean the deck worked, the sideboard was good I uh, I felt confident in all the matchups I didn't do I did one mistake uh, that I know of, and that was tapping the wrong lands. I couldn't cast uh, Vendelian Click for a turn, but it didn't affect the outcome, but it was definitely a mistake. Uh, besides that, I can't really see any mistake that I made any major mistakes. So, that's just how it is. I have to be... I'm pleased with my, um, 
my efforts and my my run but I'm very displeased with the final results when I was at 5 and 1 I was kinda confident that I would make day 2 at least and then well it just didn't I lost 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, one, two, uh, with like one life's difference every game that's you don't you don't you don't win a GP if you're gonna have those margins against you so that's it for me I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some vintage and I'm gonna shoot uh, some more modern brews uh, I'm done with Grixis Delver for this time around uh, I'm gonna keep it in paper but not online uh, and hopefully you will enjoy the future content that I will bring so Thank you for watching everyone and I'll bring you more Matic as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, it really helps us out. If you enjoyed this content, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash magic gathering strategy.